Good afternoon, I'm Melanie Williams. And I'm Derek Chan. Um, today we're here presenting a STEAM unit designed for nine and 10 year olds in an independent bilingual school. In this school, the languages of instruction are English and Potonghua. As students grow, more time is spent learning in English. So the letter A in the acronym STEAM we refer to is language arts in this particular program. The STEAM unit was created because a cultural dichotomy existed between the science content and the the students were learning in the classroom and their local environment. At the time, I was head of science at this particular school. Um, and when they were learning about the North American ecosystems, I found it made it harder for them to make connections and apply their learning. They were also Hong Kong citizens, but they were unable to act. To create the STEAM unit, it was first necessary to find a relevant local issue that was nearby and provided an appropriate context for the required science curriculum. The plight of the Hong Kong white dolphins had a cute factor that I knew would pull the heartstrings of my students and teachers alike, so they would be more motivated to take action. When making the unit, we used the principles from Understanding by Design framework from McTai and Wiggins that focused on the desired results and the end goals during the planning. To do this, we created essential ideas in science that removed, and sorry, as we removed the specificity, specificity, so an overarching enduring understanding was left that could be used in multiple subject areas. And that was systems have intricate connections, a change in one part can cause a change in another. In addition, conceptual lenses added direction and depth to the enduring understanding. They also served to constrain the chosen learning experiences and became part of the guiding questions for the inquiry, such as how is ecosystems balanced? Why do they change? How is, sorry, what is the cause of the change and who is responsible? So the end goals had to encompass what the students were understood and what skills they could apply. The final task was twofold. First, students would collaboratively engineer a solution to the problem. And second, students would individually write a persuasive letter to a stakeholder of their choice stating their position and the need for action. Students needed personal values for the second task. Solving issues sustainably requires examining, understanding multiple perspectives, sorry, examining and understanding multiple perspectives beyond your own. As ad adults, we call this empathy. To support these end goals, inquiry learning experience was strategically designed. For example, the pre-teaching of graphing and data interpretation skills allowed students to accurately analyze and interpret data collected. Likewise, the students required knowledge of ecosystems as well as knowledge of the local issue before they could decide to take action. Since social issues drove the inquiry, we added two more questions to the science curriculum to link the human impact these were also linked to the final tasks. How do people's needs and wants impact ecosystems and what are possible solutions to the environmental problem? Here, the guiding questions allowed students to produce their own models of energy flow in the local marine ecosystem. Instead of using those in a textbook, the students made deeper connections to their local ecosystem this way. Here are some other models created by students who use them as evidence in their final oral presentations. This Minecraft-inspired animation shows how fishermen may be affected by the loss of dolphins. Here, if the, dolphin, if the dolphins die, the fish population will increase causing an overconsumption of their food source, plankton. Without their own food sources, the fish will eventually perish, leaving the fisher folk with no fish left to catch. As our classes began unpacking the guiding questions created by the teachers, students themselves began forming questions of their own. 
Here, a student came across the word biomagnification in one of the resources provided. He wanted to understand it a little bit more. In his quest, he located his own resources and synthesized his new understandings with the pyramid model the class had learned earlier. Next, students explored how scientists collect data and what scientists do with that data. To achieve this, one of the things we asked students to do was to consider how various technologies could be used to collect certain types of data. This exercise was important not only in helping students put on the hat of the scientist, it also set the stage for the opportunity to collect data for themselves on a field trip. To the Pearl River Delta, students brought binoculars, cameras, iPads, clipboards, their personal questions, and observation sheets. Here, students used the tools to keep a lookout for things that they observed while out on the waters. Every time this student saw a piece of trash in the Pearl River Delta, she marked it off with a T. She used other symbols to indicate dolphins and boats. Back in the classroom, the thoughtful pre-teaching of skills meant students could analyze and interpret the collected data. Furthermore, discussions could occur around the question, what answers do these graphs provide? Following the collection and analysis of data, students were now ready to tackle one of the main goals. First, students needed to use the data that they had collected to identify a particular problem in the Hong Kong marine ecosystem. Only then could they begin to design specific solutions. As you can imagine, there were similarities between the ideas of students. Due to this phenomenon, teachers allowed students to group together based on their opinions. For example, those that saw the economic potentials of the Macau Bridge and Third Runway may create a solution vastly different to those who were opposed to the construction. Student groups were given a checklist to follow so they could maintain their independence and authentically grow and develop as a team and design ideas. So here are some examples of solutions that the children came up with. In this solution, a GPS tracking device was to be fitted to all, sorry, to all dolphins so that boats could avoid them. It was the presentation of solutions that actually allowed the evaluation of their own and others' ideas as students as the student audience asked questions and probed deeper. For example, for this particular presentation, students asked, how will you attach it? And how will you catch the dolphins? The students were often the toughest critics, having just investigated the same issue. In another solution, a giant aquarium was needed to be built with perhaps Ocean Park being a part of this solution, where the dolphins could move to and live. Again, student questions were, how are 61 dolphins going to fit? How do you move the dolphins? And how will you feed the calves when their milk is still toxic? Well then, may I introduce the dolphin hospital? These are all created by students, by the way. Here, two students zeroed in on potential milk toxicity in mother dolphins. Here's their plan. Our plan is to capture mother dolphins and their calves, then feed calves man-made milk while the mother feeds the chemicalized milk to the fake calf. We got this idea from the fact that calves are more likely to live if they are, if they, if they are the second or third baby as the chemicals in the mother are mostly already fed to the first baby, leaving less chemicals in the mother's body. As a result of students inquiring into areas of their own interests, most students were highly motivated and went beyond what we as teachers set as performance expectations. Here, the Dolphin Hospital duo created their own brochure. Okay, just quickly. 
Students were encouraged to link their solution and the evidence they had found to their inquiry. In this issue, uh, in this case, they used red wolves, black-footed ferrets, and bald eagles to show that their solution could be successful. In this solution, the boys had been interested in bridges and tunnels that go under highways in North America and Canada for their animals. Here, they created tunnels in the oceans for the crossing near the bridge construction site, which was, at the time, interrupting their ability, the dolphins' ability to use echolocation to find food. Another solution here was capture, train, and release came from looking at the behaviors, intelligence, and agility of the dolphin. In this case, the solution could train them to jump over the nets and the boats. In this presentation, the girls were talking about having more area for the dolphins, um, a protected area. Questions such as, how will the fishermen be kept out of protected areas, and what will happen if they go in there came from the audience. Since the final task was to persuade their chosen audience to take action, the students needed to learn persuasive skills and techniques in English. These naturally flowed through to their presentations of their solutions and made for a more convincing scientific argument. Overall, through integration, the concepts were unpacked and the learning of technical vocabulary was reinforced. This was valuable as the majority of our students were still developing fluency in their English language skills. Over time, as evidence mounted, their opinions evolved. Let's take a look at some of the resulting opinions. In their persuasive writing, they expressed their opinions and values along with their language art skills. Here, the bridge will benefit Hong Kong citizens, the entire Pearl River Delta drivers, and even Chinese white dolphins. Without the bridge, it will take about four hours to travel on car, or one and a half hours traveling on boat from Hong Kong Interna International Airport to Zhuhai. On the other hand, traveling from Hong Kong International Airport to Zhuhai via the bridge will only use 45 minutes. You may think that the Chinese white dolphins are Mickey Mouses in our minds, but they aren't. Most people would use the bridge, decreasing marine traffic and saving the Chinese white dolphins. By highlighting the economic value of the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge, this student expressed an unpopular perspective, but he also used data that he collected to craft his message in writing. Another, another student took a more popular approach, a more environmental. If you think dolphins are safe living in Hong Kong, then you're wrong. There are problems other than what we're talking about today. One of these is that the polluted water goes into the dolphins. They are toxicated and died slowly. In addition, there are ways to injure and cause open wounds to dolphins. Furthermore, dolphins may not be able to find food because they can't use echolocation to sense fish. Regardless of the solutions the students were making, clear links from the evidence found to the research and the issue at hand. Although some may not be practical ideas, they were confident in their delivery and were determined that they could make a difference. These are the skills you cannot teach. More learning over time would help students determine the practicality and success of their ideas. However, for now, it was wonderful to see how many ideas were being formed. This also included actions by students such as this cute animation made by a group of boys who used it to persuade the audience in their final presentation. Wait for it. Oh, one more. This also, in oh, sorry. Some other actions included students making their own website to inform others and taking local environment taking action on local environmental actions. The STEAM unit empowered students to establish authentic connections within the community by taking a position regarding a local Hong Kong issue and in doing so, becoming active citizens. Thank you. Thank you very much. So now we have a Q&A session and we have some questions uh, from the audience. So the first question is, um, is there a high percentage of the solutions sourced directly from the internet? Or uh, do they go through some form of the design thinking process? Because, because the students were, are 9 and 10 year olds, 
Um, we also had to take that into, into consideration. Um, so one of the things that we realized uh, was to scaffold students with examples of other ecological solutions. Um, for example, uh, crabs in certain parts of the world, when they cross, street, uh, cross roads, they might get smushed or crushed. So um, one solution that ecologist, uh, scientists designed was to um, create a bridge that the crabs could use to cross, cross over so they don't get smushed or crushed. Um, so through presentation of various solutions around the world, uh, st the students became aware of them, and then in being aware, in, in being aware of them, they applied their own knowledge of what was happening in Hong Kong, what was happening in the marine ecosystem in Hong Kong, and um, through those other more professional um, solutions, engineered their own solutions at the nine and 10-year-old level. Thank you very much. Thank you.